lessons from the Exodus. We taken from Exodus chapter 15 and verses 1 to 19. You notice in your weekly, we have printed for you on the back page, a blank page. This blank page is for sermon notes. I hope that you would take time to write down your thoughts. I pray that it will help all of us uh, to grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. For writing will make an exact man. The theme of the book of Exodus is redemption. God's redemption of his people. He redeemed them from slavery in Egypt and made them free men en route to the promised land. It provides for us a vivid picture of God's salvation of sinners in, the bond, in bondage to sin. And Exodus chapter 15 and verse 13 provide for us the anchor verse to understand what God was doing for his people. This is the verse that we have memorized. And it says, Thou, in thy mercy, hast led forth thy people, which thou hast redeemed. The mercy of God describes his goodness, describes his kindness towards his people. Undeserved, and yet God gave. Egypt was a place of bondage for Israel. But Egypt was at first a place of incubation, where in the land of Goshen, Israel grew from 70 when they first entered with their father Jacob to more than 2 million people at the time of the Exodus through the auspices of Joseph, Jacob's son with Rachel who was prime minister under Pharaoh. We recall beginning our study in November 2021 with the first message from Genesis to Exodus where we saw Israel move from prosperity to privation. When we begin the book in Exodus chapter 1, it was told to us that there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said to the people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they, there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, Genesis, Exodus chapter 1 tells us that they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they were tasked to build pharaohs, treasure cities, python, and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they grew. The first six chapters tells us of their need of redemption. We saw in message two, in in which we entitled The Beginning of Persecution, targeting adults, targeting children. Israel was already, were already slaves in Egypt. And then came Pharaoh's decree to kill all the infant boys which would come out of their mother's womb. They would be thrown into the river now. It was a case of infanticide. A very cruel situation that befell 
the people of Israel at that time. And we are told that it was so grievous that the people of Israel cried in their great agony to the Lord. And lo and behold, we saw how God raised a baby that was born at that time of the persecution, but escaped the persecution. Well, he was put on the ark, a little uh, 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 floating uh, 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 boat, as it were, that was placed on the river Nile by his dear sister, and how that little uh, cradle boat floated on the river now to the arms of Pharaoh's daughter who took the baby up and mothered the child. So Moses became a prince in Egypt, brought up in the palace, and he could have been the next Pharaoh. This was what we saw from chapter 2 to chapter 6. On the ark, in the palace, on the run, in the wilderness. That was the message born in such a time. And on the 12th of December 2021, we received a message, the call of a servant, how God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, encounter with God, and endeavor for God. God called him to be the deliverer, and he answered the call of God. And so that was the preparation for battle, the battle plan, the battle order, battle ready. Exodus chapter 4 and verses 19 to 31. On the 9th of January 2022, our text, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. The mercy of God is seen when he heard the cry of the Israelites in great bondage and affliction. As mentioned, the word mercy means goodness and kindness of God. Hearing the cries of those in bondage and delivering them from their sin. On the 5th of December 2021, we had that message. My God, hear my cries. God hears, God does not forget us, God help us. You turn with me to Exodus chapter 2 and verses 23 to 25. Exodus chapter 2 and verses 23 to 25. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel signed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage, and God heard, heard their groaning. When we are under bondage, in persecution, in the enemy territory, and subjugated. It was a terrible experience, just as was described by Jesus, the man whom he saw who was possessed with devils. His life was a great agony and torment until the Lord Jesus delivered him. The devils came out of him. 
And then he was quiet, he was calm, and he received back his life. This is a picture to show us the life that we live before we come to know God. We were lost, we were wanderers. And Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 12, described for us the lost estate of men. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. One. That's the state that we are in. Before God would deliver us from our bondage. Well, as for me, I say that there was a time when life just cannot click together. And in the struggle of the heart, the Lord sent a man, a teacher in the school and I'll walk this way he would walk the other way and then he would lead me to his office and there set me down and turn to the book of John and he would read in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among men suddenly I understood the jigsaw puzzle of life came all clear. Whereas before, there was that struggle to understand the right from the left hand. But when Christ was introduced and the Spirit of God came to bring understanding, well, I may say by the mercy of God, I have not looked back since then. On the 7th of February, 2022, we, our message was entitled, The Battle Begins. Uh, you remember that on that day, our pulpit was brought down. It was a momentous time in the experience of the church where our worship was curtailed. And we saw how God was mighty to save. God sent 10 plagues to deliver His people. We saw the power of God, the power of our Redeemer, and His ability to save. He sent 10 plagues and in the final plague, Israel will experience a great torment. On the 6th of March, we had the message at about midnight, came the cry of the families of Israel because their firstborn of men and cattle died. There was that wrangling. Moses was there to confront Pharaoh ten times. In that final time, they will not see each other again. And God instituted at that time the Passover. The Passover was instituted to save Israel from the death plague that came upon the land. Exodus chapter 12 and 26 and 27 tells us, you recall, and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who pass over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the Lord bowed, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. 
Israel was never to forget their humble beginning and God's merciful deliverance. Today, we stand happy, contented, because God has delivered us from the bondage of sin. It was a great bondage before we came to the Lord. But after He delivered us, how wonderful it is. The new life that we have experienced in Christ. And so, Christ is called the past over because the Passover lamb, the one-year-old lamb that was slain, that each household will bring and slain at the appointed time, 3 p.m. And there, the blood of the lamb was placed on the doorpost of all their houses. So that when midnight came, and the death angel came over the land, there was suddenly a great cry. But in Israel, we said, not one dog wet its tongue. Everything was quiet. There was a great deliverance that God made. And 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, Purge out the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For Christ, even Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. You know, purge out the old leaven, the bread that the Israelites were supposed to eat uh, in the Chinese translation. Is called Kun Ku Ping because they were going through great tribulation. And so the Lord asked them that every time each year they remember the Passover feast, they are to eat unleavened bread. The unleavened bread is bread that you don't put any yeast in it. So that the bread is very hard, it's not. A reason is not soft bread, but hard bread, difficult to eat. To remind them that they went through those times. And the Lord wants us to remember, to help us to see how He delivered us from the bondage of sin. How wonderful it is that we can live holy lives to return thanks to God for saving us from all our sins and to give us a place in heaven. In Jesus Christ, death has lost its sting. We have indeed a life worth living for. And this was the new beginning for the people of Israel, which we saw from chapter 7 to chapter 11, the power of God to deliver Israel, how the Red Sea was parted. Our text in Exodus 15 and verse 13 says, Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength. Indeed, the Red Sea was parted. They were being chased. There was no way out. Before them was the Red Sea. There was no way they could cross behind them was the Egyptian army coming against them. And it was a most pivotal time. 
their life were in great danger. And how the Lord caused the Red Sea to part. And how they were able to cross safely. And Moses in chapter 15 gave this song of thanksgiving when he said in verse 1, I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. And so the enemy was chasing them. They managed to cross the sea, the, 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 the Red Sea on dry land and the enemy behind them as they crossed and they got over the sea came back upon the enemy to drown them. The Lord is my strength and song. He is become my salvation. He is my God and I will prepare him a habitation, my Father's God, and I will exhort him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Indeed, the Lord guided them and they escaped the power of the enemy. The superpower at that time, the most powerful army on earth at that time, the Egyptians who built the pyramids, they were defeated, totally destroyed. Well, soon we are going to speak about the conquest of the promised land. How the Lord led forth after we are saved. The Lord has a work for us and He is leading us to conquer new grounds by His power. And this we will learn in the book of Joshua, which we, God willing, will begin in our study. Our text tells us in verse 4 of chapter 15, Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sendest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as a stubble. And with the blasts of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together, and the floods stood upright as a heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. You see, in this book of Exodus, we don't hear the name of Satan once, but we see all his devices in action. Just as it was when our Lord Jesus was born, Herod ordered the killing of all the infants. It was the same thing the killing of all the babies, the male ones, just before the time of the Exodus. But there you see how God prepared His deliverer in the palace, in the house of the enemy. Moses was brought up. You see the amazing way in which God works. It was for the redemption of his people. And we see how the Lord led them forth and showed them the way. He delivered them. How was Israel delivered? They were delivered by the blood of the Lamb. When Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, it was the picture of the Passover lamb. 
It was the picture of redemption that began right there at the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve first sinned. You remember the first gospel that was preached in Genesis 3 and verse 15? It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. The woman's seed. The seed of Christ that would come. And Satan's seed. And you see that battle that goes on. The salvation that would come. And you remember Adam and Eve was clothed with a coat of skin that the Lord made for them to cover their, to cover their nakedness after they have sinned against God. Well, this was the same Passover lamb to show us the picture of redemption, the blood sacrifice. And so we need to see the character of redemption, how we are purchased by His blood, the blood that was spilled, the blood that freed us by its power. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth thy people, which thou hast redeemed. And from chapter 12 to chapter 18, you would see the responsibilities of the redeemed. After they came out of Egypt, what were they to do? They were to trust God, to follow Him, to obey Him. And you remember our message? There was no water. And then there was no food. Well, we came to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord says, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. No, don't work. Keep one day free to worship God. And how we would obey the Lord and said, I would keep that day for you, Lord. Well, it was a day that God appointed for our rest. It was also a day that God has appointed for us to remember His redemption. And for us to remember so that we would not take matters into our own hands to think that it is in our own strength that we have the power to get wealth. Dear friends, far from it. You remember when they came out of Egypt, what did God ask them to do? To spoil the Egyptians. And how each of the Israelites' household went and they got the silver and the gold and the precious matters from the Egyptians. And those were the possessions that God gave to them that they would use to build the tabernacle. You see, God knows how to take care of us. When we committed our lives to Him, you realize God brought them to the wilderness. Why did God bring them to the wilderness when they came out of Egypt? It is for them to see that they had nothing to rely on. Sometimes God has to strip us of all those things which we think are our earthly security. And when God began to take them away, Oh, we realize, we realize uh, that we, it is indeed the Lord Himself who provided for them. You remember they had no water? And what did the Lord do? The Lord asked Moses to strike the stone, and the water came out of the water, and they had no food. 
After they came out of Egypt, what did the Lord do? The Lord rained manna from heaven. And when they wanted meat, what did the Lord do? The Lord sent quails so that they had enough. There was no lack. They had to learn obedience. The duty of the redeemed. Obedience to the Lord. To trust God to take care of us. He brings us through that journey to help us to see that our lives depend on Him. Even the very breath from our nostrils comes from Him. You see, and you know, we don't really know how God sustained us, isn't it? I was just reading up and it says that, you know, uh, the blood goes, uh, goes from the heart goes into the lungs so that you'd have oxygenated uh, blood that flows to all parts of the body. To nourish the body. And, well, we have been living so well for so long, we don't know how we were functioning so well. Why our brains work so well, we can think so well. Uh, we can order lives in the family, do all things. Well, God made all these things. Can we see that if there is a malfunction in any one of our system? Well, something can go very wrong, isn't it? But by His mercy, we are preserved. And that is where the Lord wants us to see Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou has redeemed. How the Lord leads us. How the Lord guides us and provides for us. And you remember the waters that they were supposed to drink were bitter water? And how the Lord caused the water to become sweet so that they can partake of it. Well, we go through seasons of testing, and that we saw in verse chapter 12 to chapter 18, where they went through great trials. And Peter describes for us these trials of the Christian life in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 6 to 9. Would you turn there? 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6 to 9. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trials of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The trying of our faith. Has trials come your way since you want to dedicate yourself to walk with God? I say to you that the more you want to walk with God, the greater your resolve, well, the greater the trial that will come. But be not dismayed. The Lord's power, His grace is greater. And so Peter says, ye are in heaviness, through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, 
it might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye loved, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So when we are faced with a temptation, what are we to do? We are to come to the Lord. We are to seek Him first. Rest in Him. Look to Him. Read the Word of God. Search the Scriptures. You see this one good article in our weekly today. To go to the Word, go to the book, and there you will find the solution that the Lord has for you, the way out. And to exercise faith in God, in other words, to be obedient to His Word, to follow what He has revealed to us. Thou in thy in mercy has let forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength. The power of the deliverance from Egypt. And then the power of the provision of God. Throughout their time in the wilderness, how the Lord provided for them, how the Lord knew what they needed. Can we see? Would we trust Him and believe in Him and obey Him and follow Him? From verses 12 to 20, uh, from chapter 12 to chapter 24, God provided chapter 9, 19 to chapter 24. God provided for them His laws. You remember, God is going to make for them a nation. They had a people when they came out of Egypt, two million of them. But how are they going to live one with another and with those outside? God gave His laws in order to teach them from chapter 19 all the way to chapter 24, God's laws that govern every society. You know, the laws of God are universal laws. In other words, it is good for any people, any time. And if we would follow them, we would prosper and yet prosper. The era that we lived in the blessings that came to us was a result of the 16th century Protestant Reformation where the church broke the shackles of bondage from the Roman Catholic yoke and began to experience true salvation by grace only by faith only, through His Word only. Sola fide, sola gratia, sola scriptura. How wonderful it is when the people of God understood the way of salvation. And that's where men begin to be liberated. And the world we lived in the last 400 years were a result of that liberation. The common law that we have inherited, right, Singapore law, is taken from Indian law, and Indian law from British law, and British law from Roman law, and Roman law from God's law. You remember Rome was Christianized in the 4th century. 
the influence of the laws of God, chapter 19 to chapter 24, made provisions for the failures of God's people. Show them where they have gone wrong, why we are wayward as we are, what we shouldn't do that would harm us. The Ten Commandments were given and then the commandments that were given were then placed as a memorial and Moses said to the people, would you obey? And the people said, we will obey. This was the covenant that God made with his people to follow him and his promise that he will guide them all through so that we will indeed have no regrets. We will prosper and yet prosper with God leading us. The nation with the people, God gave them the law which was their constitution. And they had to take time to imbibe the law of God's word. And in our weekly, we said in Proverbs 30 verse 5, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Where do we find true security and safety in this life? So that we can be preserved, prolonged and protected by appropriating the whole counsel of God's perfect word. And by faith in God who gave His word. Every word of God is good. And we have 66 books, a large volume for us to begin to study and to see all aspects of life, before life, during our life, and even after life, the Lord teaches us. And we are to appropriate it the word pure describes for us the word of God as being tried and tested. In other words, you can rely upon it because it is true. It is the word there speaks of uh, the word there means refined as matter is being refined through a heating process. A heat is to take away the dross so that you would have the pure matter. And the Lord wants us to see that when God gave His law, chapter 19 to 24, we are to appropriate it. And how can we appropriate it? We can appropriate it by taking time to study it. And, and 2 Samuel 22 verse 31. Would you turn there? 2 Samuel 22 and verse 31. It says here, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. His way is perfect. If you go to the word of God, you would come to His instructions and he would tell you that perfect way in which to walk. The word perfect means whole, entire, wanting nothing, entirely according to truth and fact. What is complete, having integrity, come to the word of God. And so the word was given to the people 
and they had to digest it, to study it. And then from chapter 25 to chapter 40 will be the last instructions that will be given so that they would learn how to commune with God, to draw strength from God. By the building of the tabernacle, it showed them how sins can be dealt with, how sin can be dealt with in our lives. You know, when sin is not dealt with in our life, there is no peace in our hearts. Only when sin is dealt with. So the tabernacle provides for us the picture how sin can be dealt with. Remember, we spent so much time speaking about the construction of the tabernacle, how the Israelite is to bring their cattle, bring their lamb to the gate, and how they have to put their, arm, their hands upon the animal to signify the transferring of their sins to that animal, and how the priest would receive on their behalf the animal, and how the animal would be slain, and how it would be put on the altar of sacrifice to be burned, the blood would be shed. A description of Christ, how sins can be dealt with. This was the last portion of the, the book where it was shown to us how we can make right with God. Today, we have the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, in which we come together each time with self-examination to reveal our own life. That was what the tabernacle was for, that the people of God may reveal their own life. Self-examination. That's very important, isn't it? The, the outlook of the people was always an in-look. In other words, they were always looking at themselves, what they were doing. If their lives were right with God, then it would be right with the people around us. And the Lord wants us to see how if we are able to make right with God, confess our sins, and do that which is right, the way of righteousness, then you find that life takes on a whole new meaning. So they had the a people, they had a constitution, and God built, caused them to build the tabernacle, which was a way by which they can commune with Him, but it was also a way by which they see the visible presence of God with them. Remember our last message, by day and by night, there was a pillar of fire by night, pillar of cloud by day so that when the cloud would go up, they would prepare to move. When the cloud was down, they would be prepared to stay put. God guided them whether to journey, whether to rest. God showed them the way. And when they looked inside the tabernacle, they saw the presence of God, the light from the candlestick. And outside, what did they see? The wilderness. They see death. They see barrenness. When you have God taking care of us, ah, there is true security. God's peace is with us. And the people of Israel learned it. Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people 
which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength. Indeed, Israel saw the power of God caring for them as a shepherd, leading his sheep. In thy holy habitation. They had to go to the wilderness because there they would be freed from all the idolatries of Egypt. Like we mentioned, Egypt has an idol for each day of the year. And their minds were still filled with Egypt. You remember when Moses didn't come down from the mount, they quickly made for themselves their own God, the golden calf. And when God asked them to go into the promised land, they had no faith. They said the, the land is full of giants. We couldn't get in. The enemy is too great, cannot fight. Cannot fight. Dear friends, this is what this is what the enemy wants you to learn, to know, or to be to be conditioned that you cannot fight. You are a losing, you are a losing horde. There's no way that you will have victory. There are giants in the land. Indeed, there were giants in the land. But God has given them the instruction to go in the land. But they did not. They were frightened. They were fearful. They would not fight the Lord's battle. And because they would not fight the Lord's battle, that generation that came out of Egypt will not enter the promised land. That whole generation perished in the wilderness, except Joshua and Caleb. They entered the promised land. And we're going to talk about the life of Joshua. Forty years old when he was with the people of Israel coming out of Egypt and how they were there in the wilderness going round and round for 40 years. And 80 years old, when Moses was 120, that was what we are studying in our Wednesday Bible study, the book of Deuteronomy. God prepared the people to enter the land. He was 80 years old. And the Lord said, Now it is time. Prepare to enter the land. They had to fight. They had to conquer. And the Lord will lead them in the conquest. And they would have the Lord with them for them to become a full-fledged nation. They had to possess the land. And to possess the land, they would have to face the giants in the land. Remember Goliath? Goliath was a big man. Had to be defeated. The Lord will give his strategy. The Lord will give the battle plan. And we are to be obedient to his voice, follow his guidance to fight the battle. And I pray that God would help us as we begin our study of the book of Joshua, the conquest of the land, how they would become a full-fledged nation. They had to enter the land and God will lead them. There is a work for the people of God on earth before they would enter their heavenly rest. There is a work for us 
to do the bidding of God and the Lord will lead the way and we are to follow His command. May the Lord guide us, show us the way as we look to Him, wait upon Him and rise up to fight as He command us. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy word. Strengthen us by Thy grace to do Thy bidding. Thank Thee for helping us to study the book of Exodus, to understand the redemption plan of God, how Thou art mighty to save, how Thou will indeed save souls by the power of the gospel to open the spiritual eyes of men and women blinded by sin. O Lord, we commit to Thee our gospel rally next Lord's Day. May Thou be gracious to bless it for Thy own honour and glory that Thy word may go forth to accomplish its holy purpose for the conversion of souls for the edification of the saints. May Thou help us as we wait upon Thee. This I pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.